Good evening, Islander fans. It's the Canadian Islander fan. I'm your host, Terry, and uh, we're playing our second hockey game in two nights. Seems like last time it took us to get two hockey games in, took us 25 days to do it. So it's kind of nice to get into a bit of a groove here uh, with some playing time. Uh, now, the thing I'm looking for tonight is, is a big win, obviously, is a sweep. And for me, uh, an Islander loss tonight will make everything they did uh, yesterday pretty much useless. So uh, this the time is now. We must sweep this series. I know I mentioned that again last night, but uh, yeah, it's 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 crucial that we win this. It's, I, I hate to say must win because it's not a must win. It, it's never a must win uh, if it's automatic. Uh, if until you're automatically eliminated it's not a must win so but in reality it's a must win uh, i want to apologize yesterday for the video uh filming out of victoria bc here uh in a hotel room it took me over three hours to upload yesterday's video and normally that takes me about uh 20 25 minutes at home to do so uh video is coming out a little late and i assume the same thing will happen tonight when i do this one as well uh found out a little news about the Islanders today Kyle Palmieri I thought was being a healthy scratch apparently he is still just not up to snuff yet and Barry has him at about the 80 to 85 percent range so uh let's hope Kyle gets better quick and we can always use him uh not the Kyle that we had earlier this season but the Kyle Palmieri from the New Jersey Devils we could use a whole lot so uh Get better, Kyle. Uh, we're we're we need you back for sure for this run that we're about to embark on. So, anyway, I'm excited about another Islander hockey game tonight. It should be good. Uh, Barry said that the lineup was going to be the same as last night. I don't expect uh, maybe the lineup will be the same. I have a feeling the lines are going to be different. He obviously was not pleased with Bellows with with. Uh, on the on the first line which for me is a little disappointing to give him a one game trial i mean he gave gave leo a 40 game trial last year plus playoffs and bailey's gotten a trial for as long as his career has gone on so to judge a kid on on one game i'd, I'd be surprised if he's on the first line to me if palmary's not going to be inserted there's only one other option for the first line and that'll be Walserman. Who knows how Barry's going to feel about the two penalties that Wally took yesterday. But like I said, sometimes you gotta, you gotta live with these kind of players like this, just as we lived through the Barzell hooking in and, and, and penalties in that you got to remember Wally's still a young guy. So uh, yeah. Uh, I think we just need to do uh, a little more of what we did yesterday. We got to be better than we were defensively because if it wasn't for Ilya, there'd have been more than one goal on the board. I'm not too worried about Barley starting tonight because uh, I'm a big believer in our 1A, 1B starters. And I, I don't mind the rotation until you get to the playoffs and, and go with who's hot and whatnot. So anyway, going into this game, uh, the Islanders PK has cracked the top 10 in the NHL. So uh uh, and we've been on a real run with the PK lately. They, they've been playing some great hockey, so that's nice to see. So uh, the power play kind of dipped back to 22nd from 18th, but that's okay. We only went 0 for 1, but that was enough to put us back. So we're obviously in a group of people that are very tight right now in uh, power play percentage. So uh, overall, the power play has been great, so we can't complain about that. Uh, I mean, going 0 for 1 and we have one bad power play you can't get too mad at the power play but it, it was it was pretty brutal last night they must have had five scoring chances on that power play that we had so that kind of stuff we can't have tonight so <clears throat> we always try to win by committee and hopefully you know we'll we'll do the same thing tonight so it's uh barzell and lee's turn to step up and score a goal and pajot wallstrom and Brise to step up and get a goal uh, I've got a feeling what we're going to see tonight is just uh, a Bellows and Wallstrom flop. So uh, we'll see how it goes. 
Uh, I imagine Philadelphia will probably be throwing Carter Herb at us tonight. And yeah, he's supposed to be a good goaltender, still hasn't proved it in the NHL. And so we need to take advantage, like just about every other team's taking advantage of Carter Hart in the net. So uh, anyway, it's a big game tonight. Uh, this being one game below 500, this is it. This is our second crack at uh, getting back to 500. And let's hope we do it. Uh, it, you need to get to 500 and start moving up. So anyway, I'm all excited about this game. So uh, let's get this thing rolling. We'll see you in between the first and second period. Let's go, Islanders. After one period of play, the New York Islanders and Philadelphia Flyers are tied 1-1. What looked to be a promising first period uh, ended up being a pretty big disappointment. Uh, Islanders came out flying in the period and looked like we had the legs and we were just going to carry on from uh, where we left off. Uh, Robin Salo getting his first goal of the year, two minutes into the game, two minutes and eight seconds. And uh, I'm so happy for him because I, I thought he scored last night and got his first NHL goal. But what a beauty tonight's was. That's a great first goal to be able to remember. Uh, a real snipe by by Salo. And uh, he almost scored about two minutes later as well. Uh, he hit the mass. So, you know, three inches to one side or the other, and he, he scores another goal in, in that period. So he actually had a pretty good period, even though uh, he ended up taking a penalty, which Philadelphia ended up scoring on the power play on a uh, little bit of a lucky bounce there. I, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in Barlamov tonight, though. It looks really sloppy around the around the net and he, he looks kind of slow a uh, little worried uh, i'm hoping he picks it up mind you i'm hoping the whole freaking team picks it up so uh robin sal is scoring his first goal of his nhl career and i said last night this guy will score a lot of goals for us even though he didn't score last night and he's starting off tonight with a goal but assisted by barzi and uh, Parise, Parise getting an assist there. Look how easy it is to get a point on the first line when, you, when you're playing well. So uh, Parise looking good. I thought, uh, I thought Beauvillier was our best forward out there. He was absolutely flying the whole period. So looking really good, really, really good. And uh, very disappointed that we let Philly back in this game. These guys are down on the ropes right now. They lost, what, is it eight in a row, nine in a row? I can't, uh, I lost track. Maybe it'll be nine in a row if they lose tonight. But we need to take advantage of this team. We need to, we need to sweep this series. And uh, I guess I don't really care if Philadelphia gets a point, but there's no way this team should get a point against us. So uh, we're, we're just a better, better team than they are by, by quite a margin. And, to let them back into the game like that was very, very disappointing. I thought Wallstrom also had a very good period. He looked real good. Bellows was looking good out there. Once again, reunited, as I said last night, Wallstrom and Bellows got great chemistry. Uh, I thought Pajot had a pretty good period as well. Love that move. If only he went to his backhand, I think he would have easily scored with a minute left in the period there. So, yeah, that, that was a bit unfortunate. So, uh, we need to get uh, testing Carter Hart a little bit more. We were out shot in the period 12 to 9. We had a big shot lead at one point, too. So we really let Philly come back into it. Once again, our power play looks good. Our PK didn't bounce off the wall like that. It's, it's, that's a hard one. You know, it, it's going to stop you. Just when you think the hockey gods are, are, are starting to even things up when – the uh, Flyers get their goal called off on on the offside then they they get a break like that like I mean it comes off the backboard through Barley's legs and then pushes it back through the legs again to get a goal so you just can't throw any games away I don't know if anybody saw that stat tonight uh, before the game but basically right now the eighth place team in the league Boston Bruins in the east is projected for 107 points I, I, I think 97 is the, is the mark that has never not gotten you in the playoffs. So uh, one of these eight teams is going to have to fall. And it wouldn't surprise me if one of the eight teams falls. It, it happens all the time. It happens all the time that for all eight of them to keep it up is, is going to be very difficult. So we just got to worry about our own business take care of our own business and win these games that we're supposed to win. So I'm hoping to see the Islanders come out in the second, like they came out in the first 
and keep it sustained throughout the whole period and the third period as well. And if they do that, we'll win this game. So, uh, you know, we, we score another goal or, and then another quick one, you get a two goal lead on this team, they're going to disappear for the rest of the game. So be on your toes, boys. Carter Hurt's not the best in the world. So let's, let's get on him and score some goals here. So let's get it together, guys. See you guys in between the second and third period. Uh, after two periods of play, the New York Islanders and the Philadelphia Flyers are tied up 2-2. And I just have to keep reminding myself, I have to keep reminding myself, this team is still rusty. And uh, <laughs> it's hard because we know how important it is. But two or three podcasts ago, when we started back up again, I said this was not going to be a one, two, three game kind of get the rust off. This is going to take a couple of weeks. And like we've got eight games in the next couple of weeks. Like we've, we've already played two of them, but but eight games in two weeks is, is going to shake all that rust off. I did say <laughs> that what we need to do is somehow still, even though we're battling, shaking off this rust and getting going again, we need to still accumulate points. And this game would be a prime example right now. 2-2 going into the third period. Honestly, I don't care if Philadelphia gets a point as long as we get two points. We all know Philadelphia is not going to be in the playoffs this year. So uh, it, they can have a point if they want it. Well, we'll catch them later. Uh, but we need to. We, we need to pull out two points out of this game. So very important for us to to somehow you know soldier on through this game and and come up with two points we really need it and uh horrible horrible period for the islanders we uh yeah thank goodness for the barzell line stepping it up there and got a little momentum going back our way but really the the flyers were all over us all period long but once again i i can't be too mad at the owners cuz i know that it's it's still the rust now i know a lot of people will think oh uh, you know they played three games but anybody who's played hockey knows that you can't be away from the game that long yeah you, you can practice every day but it, if you if you're not playing any games it's just not there it's a whole different level from practice like you know I, I've been in fights in practice because a guy taking liberties on me where, you know, you just don't do that in practice. And, and so you fight the guy. At least I, that's the way we did it back in the 70s and 80s. Like, don't don't screw with me in practice. But unfortunately, because of that, you don't get that same feel for the play. So three games is not enough to knock off the rust. So our most important thing here is somehow coming out with two points. Uh, and you know, I'm even gonna, I'm even gonna throw it to Barlamov with Rust. Uh, what a horrible play behind the net by him. Uh, yeah, it's, but you know, you got to give him the pass too. Uh, it, it's, it's only fair right? if you give the pass to the the forwards, you have to give it to the goaltender as well. That was a rusty play. It wasn't good bad goal especially after taking the lead after not playing very good in the period so we did take the lead on a very beautiful goal there was a lot of really nice things that happened on this goal and first and foremost was uh bailey and, and beauvillier down low for checking and and the flyers guys they had them hemmed down there for quite a bit and they couldn't they couldn't get going because the two of them were just pouncing on whoever had the puck and so it stayed scrambly there and then finally Beauvillier wrap, er, wraps it around the boards and what a play by Adam Pellick the way he did that shoulder fake into the into the boards like that uh oh it, it was a thing of beauty and he then he has an easy pass to Beauvillier and then Beauvillier makes a good pass to Bailey and Bailey made a really nice play with the the skate uh, stick but I, <laughs> I don't know what was going through Carter Hart's head man talk about overcommit on that play like he just there, there was nobody where he was sliding to like Bailey and the and the uh and the defender were right center in in the middle of the net and he, he was sliding over like Beauvillier's pass was going to somebody over on the on the other side and he basically just slid out of the net and Bailey just tucked it into another open net so that's 
three almost three empty netters for Josh this year. But still, nice play, nice kick up from the from the skate. So uh, that was a beauty goal, but very disappointing when we we gave it up that easy with Barlamov and that. Uh, I'm going to go on another rant about this. I've ranted uh, about this before, and it just ticks me off because it's so freaking dangerous. Now, a lot of you people may think that I only just watch Islander hockey games. I, I don't watch Island. Uh, well, I watch every Islander hockey game because they're my team. But I, I watch hockey from the time it's the pucks dropped in the day until the last whistle goes at night. I just go from game to game to game. So I get to see a lot of teams play. And what Konechny is doing, he does it all the time. And they need to get this out of the game. There is no way in hell that was a penalty against him when Brock Nelson hit him into the, into the boards. He did it absolutely 100% on purpose. And I, I, the reason I know this is because I, I could do it so well myself. And uh, yeah, it's great when I did it because I was just laughing at the other team. But what he does is he goes down the boards and I've seen him do this many times he goes down the boards and if he if he can't beat the guy down the boards then he just stops turns himself about a foot from the boards and he's ready for the hit and that that little one foot to six inch buffer makes a huge difference you can get nailed from behind and nothing happened by doing that but you can make it look like you, you got killed in that in that play and uh you know what what does uh player safety do they don't they don't do anything they come around every once in a while when somebody possibly might get suspended here's an idea this is a very dangerous play and it needs to be out of the game and guys like connect me and there's a lot of others in the in the nhl who do this they're they're almost inviting that hit and there lies the problem because then somebody who's unsuspecting is the guy that ends up getting hurt. And guys like Konechny and all those ones that do that are just bringing it on. Now, since I don't think uh, the player safety department does very much, how about this? Why not keep track of the players who draw uh, boarding penalties? All of a sudden, you're going to see certain names rise to the top. Then you go scout them and watch them and see what they're doing. And then you discipline. It's 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 a pretty easy solution. It's not like player safety has anything else to do at nighttime other than when they get called upon. So I don't see why they couldn't do this. Uh, Konechny is not helping out a lot of other players who may get seriously injured because of this play. And uh, but if you're expecting that hit from behind, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Trust me. I, I used to do it all the time. It, it's really, really easy. And, and all you got to do too is uh, you get ready. As soon as the hit's done, you smack the stick against the boards and it sounds like you just got killed. But guys like Connect Me need to get disciplined for, for, for drawing people to make that play on them. So anyway, that's my rant for the second period. And the reason I probably needed something to rant about is because the Islanders were so freaking awful. The most important thing is that we come back and win this. So, so anyway, uh, it was great for us to get that first or second goal. Uh, it's too bad we got shut down so quickly right after it with an equally bad goal for Philadelphia. Uh, you know, they're def whatever. Uh, all three of their goals against us in the last two games have been bad breaks. So uh, whatever important period of play coming up here guys we need to nail this down islanders get that two points any way you can let's go islanders see you after the game huge huge <laughs> the new york islanders win four to three in the ninth round of the shootout and Folks, if this wasn't exactly what I was talking about, what the Islanders need to do, this, this has to be one of our worst games of the, of the season. I, I thought we were absolutely horrible until Giroux scored. And it even took a little while, even after Giroux scored, for us to finally hit the desperation mode on getting going in the game. And uh, 
we finally showed that, you know, we got a bit of a heartbeat tonight. And once again, I'm just going to keep going back to the rust. And I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that's what it is. And, and we have to battle through this. We, we've actually gotten very fortunate in our, in our games back. We've gotten, uh, you know, some pretty good competition to try to, to get ourselves with a little bit of rust off and still walk away with the win. So we were pretty lucky to do it tonight. And, uh, but that's how we have to do it until we're up to speed and uh, just keep plugging away and grinding those points. I got to be honest with you, I was almost ready to write the Islanders season off with a 3-2 loss tonight. I, I was so disappointed with what was going on, what I was watching tonight. It reminded me of not last game, the game before. So it was just uh, horrible. And oh my God, like <laughs> we had... <laughs> We had seven opportunities to win the game. Like, my heart, like, come on, boys. Like, let's get this going. We, we really have bad, uh, we, we have bad shootout, guys. It's time to bring Franz back from Switzerland and uh, just sit him on the pine the whole game until the shootout and <laughs> get him in there. Oh, my heart. Is, uh, I'm still racing from it. I, I realize how huge this win was. It really, really was big. Um, you know, we're keeping a lot of good streaks going. Won a lot of games in a short period of time. What's that? 12 games now with only three regulation losses. So uh, things are turning around, but it was ugly tonight, but pretty much what I call for the kind of ugly. So anyway, once Claude Giroux put the Flyers up five to two, uh, what a beautiful goal by Casey Sezikis, but there's no doubt about it. Uh, two other guys played a big part in this one, a beautiful breakout pass by Clutterbuck, who's just continues to impress me this year. And uh, boy, there was just going to be no denying Scotty Mayfield on, on that play. And he, he knew it and he knew we were desperate and he, there was nothing going to stop Scotty from driving that net. And he drove that net. And I love it when Scotty shows his, his uh, offensive flair. And because he's got it. He's got it. And so does Pellick. And well, Pellick, well, when we talk about the players that. Guess what? We're 500. Yes, finally. Finally 500. So now we have met our short-term goal. Our next, uh, we can set another short-term goal. Right now we're currently... Uh, uh, behind the Flyers by one point and or two points, I guess. Uh, but we have seven or eight games in hand. I'm not. I'm not sure. So uh, our next focus is. Uh, oh, actually, I don't even know how many jerseys did tonight. Maybe it's jersey is our next uh, focus at 33 points. But uh, uh, anyway, both Jersey and 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 Philadelphia are in our sights now, like real close in our sights to jump past and it. And we got to do it now. We need to do it now. We need to make this a, a nine team race in the, in the East and uh, the honors can get there. They can, you, you wouldn't know it by tonight's game. Cause I thought they were awful. And I'm just going to have nothing but horrible things to say about all the players. I was, I was so frustrated <laughs> and uh you know, two wins and two nights. How can you not feel good about that? Uh, I know I feel great about it. So, uh, all right, let's talk about the players. Uh, I, I'm not going to let the win sway what I still saw out there tonight. Uh, Zach Parisi, <clears throat> not his best game. Uh, yeah, we, we needed more from Zach tonight. Uh, uh, however, I, I thought the first line was doing good. Oh, one thing I should talk about before I start talking about the players, it, it's a little bit hard to judge uh, by lines tonight because Barry really threw the lines in a blender tonight. And I loved it. I loved it. Nothing was happening for us. And he threw them in a blender and look what happened. Uh, it, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. The one line going doesn't throw into a blender is, I don't know if he stopped playing Matt at the end there, but was it not the identity line that scored our tying goal? I don't know if Matt was on the ice or not, or, or if Barry was playing Matt a little bit less and, and putting somebody else in like a Beauvillier or something. I'd have to check into that. Uh, but anyway, huge, uh, huge goal by Casey. So uh, I guess 
Casey said, you know what? I, I don't like being in this one goal club. Uh, I'm only sticking around it for a day and, and I'm out of here. And, uh, but we had Salo replace him into the one goal club. So we still got a good one goal club going on the island. So, <laughs> uh, all right, let's go to Josh Bailey. Josh Bailey, obviously, uh, anytime he doesn't hurt us is, is, is a good game, but uh, it was a hell of a play he made on that goal with the kick up from the skate to the, to the stick. Other than that, there wasn't a whole lot to be impressed about Josh's game, but uh, I'm not going to just jump on Josh tonight because there was a whole lot of Islanders that were in the same boat as Josh tonight. So uh, yeah. So Actually, good game, Josh. Uh, the huge goal at the time to put us ahead and whatnot. So good job by you. And and I just talked about uh, Clutterbuck. I think he's just having a whale of a season. Came through big for us. Uh, oh, he's hitting the body in that. He's got so much energy going out there. He's really driving that fourth line for us. He really is. So another good uh, – I won't – I won't say good game. Nobody really had a good game. I, I maybe I'll, I'm going to get a little overexcited and talking about some of these guys when <laughs> they mostly don't deserve it tonight. But I'm just I'm high on the win right now, so uh, so you have to bear with me. So yeah, I'm I'm allowed to be a homer. And whoa, speaking of homers, was it was this not? supposed to be a nationally televised game like uh were those two were those two guys even calling the game or were they just cheering along like we were and and they were obvious flyer fans i mean the the play-by-play -play guys talking about texting kevin hayes during the game and that <laughs> okay all right and at first i thought it was my imagination until he said that i go oh, okay you're obviously a, a flyers fan and every time the islanders broke out in any kind of good situation situation is is automatic response was look out <laughs> dude you're not supposed to call a game like that you're supposed to go I, I'm doing well. whatever uh i thought it was pretty hilarious how how uh homer that guy was it was brutal uh maddie barzell uh you know he came through for us in the in the third period didn't really notice him much in the first and second but uh he, he was, uh, I think he was the little engine behind our push tonight in the third period to get us going and whatnot. So uh, kudos going out to Matt. So a good third period, good overtime. Uh, we, we definitely outplayed him in overtime, but uh, yeah. So I'll give Matt the third and overtime, but the first two periods, not enough, not enough, not even close to enough. Uh, <clears throat> Matty Martin, uh, well, the identity line was actually before the lines all got thrown in a blender probably our probably our most solid line of the of, of of the game for the first two periods and but they still weren't up to theirs either so uh take it as you can right uh so not a bad game by matt but not great um uh, but those guys work as a unit so it's it's almost fair to to judge these guys single handily however tonight you have to because Zeke has scored the goal and and uh Clutterbuck got a great assist and played great and, and uh but Matt 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 was hitting the body out there I was watching in that so uh good for him Anthony Beauvillier uh he was gonna be in my good books whether we lost three to two or not uh really saw a lot of jump in Beau tonight and uh that was really nice to see so uh it really seems like Bo has turned the corner he he was flying out there he really was and he looked good pretty much with whoever he was uh, and, and i like when he went up with barzell there they looked really good together so uh yeah very very good game by Bo. i was really disheartened with Bo with that 20 game disappearing act and and i'm afraid it's not the first time he's done it and i'm afraid it's not going to be the last time he does it and and we can't afford that for the rest of your bow we can't even afford a 10 game no uh disappearing act. we can't afford a five game disappearing act from you keep playing like you were tonight and you'll be fine bow keep it going buddy 
Uh, Kiefer Bellows, I thought I thought Bellows was pretty good. Uh, made some nice passes. Uh, I thought Wallstrom and them uh, have really great chemistry with with Pancho. And uh, but I'm once again, see, I'm getting carried away here because of the game overall. They the bellows that everybody was not very noticeable tonight and can play way better than than they did uh even our hero tonight wally can play much better than he did tonight so uh, yeah i <clears throat> I'm, I'm gonna try not to get too excited on him but what about wally eh? like what the hell was he doing ninth to shoot I kept going, okay, it's Wallstrom coming out this time for sure. Oh, no, it's going to be Wallstrom now. And, and then I just started laughing when I saw Noah Dobson. I just, okay, all right, whatever. Uh, so maybe, you know, you never know what goes on in practice, right? They, they do these shootout things all the time. And you really don't know who the best guys are. Maybe Dobson scores all the time in, in practice and stuff like that. But I, I just couldn't believe Wallstrom was number nine. But uh, yeah, and that lethal shot did it. But I thought Wally could have had a better game. He had his moments during the game, but uh, we have seen a lot stronger games from Wally. Uh, Anders Lee was horrible. Horrible. Yeah, uh, you know, I sorry, Captain. I got to call it like I like I see him. And uh, you were terrible tonight. You've been terrible for a, a little bit. And uh, you know, I, I was blaming Bailey for bringing that line down. And sometimes, my God, does Anders ever seem slow this year? And now, I know he came off a big knee injury. And sometimes it takes, you know, it takes a little bit of time to come back from those things. So I said uh, earlier on in the season that it would probably be somewhere around the midseason point that we'd finally start seeing Anders up to snuff. But I just thought he had a horrible game tonight. He had his giveaways, bad passes, uh, just didn't seem uh, engaged in the game at all. So, yeah, and, and I, I can say that because I don't say it often about Anders, but when I see it, I see it. And that's what I saw tonight. Uh, Brock Nelson, <clears throat> still shaking off the rust, but you could see there was – there, there was bursting points with Brock tonight. Like he, he would burst for a, a short period and then he would fade away and, and, and another burst and, and he would fade away. And uh, that's the rust. That's the few games that he hasn't played in such a long time. So, but it, it's promising to see that th those bursts and levels are, are starting to happen for him. And uh, yeah, so uh, we we can get more out of Brock, but I'm not holding that against Brock because of his injury and the COVID. And uh, yeah, uh, Pajot, same thing can be said. He 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 played all right, but not good enough. He was he he's a little more engaged, which I like to see. I saw most. I saw him having a fairly good first period, and then sort of drift away throughout the game after that in the first period he was being a little bit of an agitator and hitting and that was his kind of game and he was skating and he was passing disappeared for for well he, he was engaged in the let, let's just call it the last 10 minutes of the third period where all the islanders were engaged in the last 10 minutes of the of the third period so he he too got engaged in the third period so he, he really only played about one one really bad period and a half, period and a half. But uh, once again, need more of a pager. One thing that really hurt us tonight, and I, I was shocked about this, was the uh, the uh, playoff or faceoff percentages. We dominated Philly last night, and tonight it was what was it, fifty six to forty four, and that was why we looked so bad tonight. We never had possession, rarely off the faceoff, and Philly always had possession. And we were chasing, we were chasing, we were chasing the whole game. And it starts with those face-offs. We dominated uh, at last night's game, and that's because we dominated the face-off. We get killed in the face-off circle. They are getting possession of the puck, you know. And uh, so that hurt us, and neither him and uh, Zeke were very good in the, in the face-off dot today. So uh, Robin Sallow. All right, congratulations, kid. Uh, First NHL goal, first of quite a few coming, I, I would say. What did Robin have tonight? He looked like he had about four shots. I love the fact this kid loves to shoot. He's looking much more composed. 
than he was in his earlier games. Mind you, you know, there was, it was all rookies that were playing together. We had five base rookies, <laughs> defensemen playing at once. So now that he, now that we're, we're settled uh, and the vets are back and that, Robin seems much more settled as well. So great to see from Robin. Fantastic game. Uh, let's go with, uh, oh yeah, uh, Adam Pellick. <laughs> Every game I just rave about this guy, but it's, it's, it's ridiculous how good this guy is a defenseman. And, it, and it's, a, it's a shame, like the NHL is just starting to get to know Adam Pellick now, but it's a shame people couldn't get to watch him. But you know what? Most most uh, casual fans, they just wouldn't appreciate Adam, <laughs> at least the way I appreciate Adam. Like, it's just, it's, it's amazing. He's just so good at what he does. What he did on that goal with that juke move and that, Two other times again tonight, he uh, he shot pucks into the end and the forwards went after the puck and so did he. And he got them. And especially when we were trying to make that comeback in the third period, he did it. That's the two times he did it. And he was pushing. And it, yeah, what an outstanding game. Like uh, There was a couple guys who had outstanding games. And the next guy I'm going to talk about had another outstanding game was, was Mayfield. So Pellick Mayfield, uh, these guys were going to get a good review, and Beau Villiers were going to get a good review even uh, in a 3-2 loss. But Mayfield was just outstanding tonight. There is one awesome play that I just absolutely loved. It was uh, two, two flyers. They they hemmed in Pellick, and they took Pellick on two-on-one, right? And Pellick was trying everything, and he almost got away from him, but they got the puck away from him, and they got position on him. And as soon as they got position on him, they turned it into a two-on-one on Mayfield. Mayfield just goes, yeah, we'll have no part of that. Like, holy cow. Yeah, you get by Pellick, and then you have to run into Mayfield. It's, it's what a defense. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, folks, but that's, that's just solid. That's absolutely solid. And uh, I was absolutely thrilled with those two tonight. And uh, tonight was the first time I saw something and I liked it. And I liked it a lot. And it was no Dobson at the end of the game. And uh, you can see he just wasn't as fast as he was. He, he was pretty tired. Uh, <laughs> he had a ton of ice time tonight. And uh, but you know what? The kid was still making uh, making some good moves. What do you have? Six shots on net tonight too, as well. I love. It. Remember, he wouldn't shoot in his first two years and that. So uh, now he's shooting like crazy, and I I just love it. And I I still credit that to Salo and Aho because when those two guys were playing at the start of the year, both of them were just fire, firing bombs away from the from the point. It's, it's almost like the other guy said, oh, well, I'm going to do that too then. <laughs> They're going to do it. Yeah, do it. <laughs> Mayfield, outstanding game. Uh, Chara, I had an okay game. Uh, huge on that fight. Huge on that fight. It, it's just really something to, to have that guy on our team, like, what can you say? Uh, not his not his best game overall tonight. Uh, not not his worst either. Those first five to seven games were his worst. That I don't think he'll even come close to matching for the rest of the year. It just wasn't the uh, standout version that I I've been uh, used to seeing lately. Still had an okay game, but uh, you know the de our defense tonight wasn't our problem. So it, it was our offense more not being engaged enough to get things going. <sighs> <clears throat> and I still think the face-offs really hurt us really bad. So there was that. And uh, let me uh, let me just go edit a clip from one of my prior videos, and I'll just put it in about Andy Green because I, I just keep saying the same thing every night. This guy is just so solid, so solid, so unnoticeable, uh, which makes him absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, I wasn't I wasn't going to. Uh, I, I certainly wasn't going to give Barley the best review tonight. Uh, but like I said earlier in the video, you got to give way for him having Russ too. So yeah, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't his greatest game, but man, what we needed Barley, did he come through for us? Wow. Nine for nine in the shootout. 
That's what I mean. Yeah, you need to find a way to contribute even when you're not playing your best. And uh, it wasn't like Barley was horrible. It just, I, I was nervous with him in there all night tonight. Normally, I'm not nervous with with Barley in the net, but there was something about him tonight that was just making me a little bit nervous. But uh, man, talk about money. Money goaltender right there. It came through for us when we needed him. After Drew got that goal, he kept him shut down. And then he didn't see much action for the rest of the game. Then he had to make one really good save and two really good saves in uh, in in um, overtime. Uh, but uh, Carter Carter Hart put on quite the show in overtime tonight. That, that was uh, actually something to see. So anyway, uh, I'm going to wrap up this one. Pretty excited that the Islanders are back to 500. We're winning ugly. That's fine. That's what we have to do to get this rust off. We're almost, uh, you know, almost through the first week of wiping the rust off. We've probably got one more to go, and then we have to be going full guns, and we need to do what we did tonight. We need to scoop some points when we don't deserve them. Like, I don't think we deserved any points tonight, but we got them. And that's, that's what good teams will do. And so we have to do that. But the next challenge comes, I think we play Toronto next. We eventually have to beat somebody who's a good hockey team. So uh, it may not be our best chance to do it right now with how we're playing, but we need to do it. So uh, make it happen, guys. Th this is one of the ones where you'll walk away with a point and be happy, but I still want two points out of that Leafs game. So uh, anyway, really excited with the comeback. I was so depressed before it, it was unreal. So anyway, that's all I got for you tonight. So you Islanders and fans out there, you take her easy and peace out.